Hey everybody, uh, Chris Pugh here. Uh, wanted to just do a quick little video here on uh, macros, uh, kind of in response to, I saw a, a recent Pooch and Raybolt episode where uh, they were talking about some uh, use of macros and some very cool ones that they've designed. So I was just gonna sort of go through a little bit of what I've got going on with, um, uh, with some of the ones that I'm using and uh, just kind of go over uh, what I've got. Uh, you know, one thing I do have to think about, so I'm on a SD9, so the actual physical macro keys that I have available, I only have eight, and there's only uh, a single bank of those, so I do have to be a little careful. Uh, when you do assign macros on the nines, uh, you, what you can do, however, is, um, I'm just gonna pull up an editor on one, so you can assign them to any of the eight macro keys or any of the function keys, or, or function keys one through eight, I should say, on the, uh, on the keyboard. So you've got, if you've got things, uh, some macros that are, um, that you really wanna have some intentionality and don't necessarily need to get to uh, at all times on the desk, uh, that's, that might be a good place to put one, and I've actually got one on there that I'm gonna sorta go through here. Uh, in terms of um, just something that um, one of the macros, one of the cooler ones that I've got that actually I do put on the keyboard in terms and uh, just um, that way I don't have to really worry with, um, uh, it's one of those that I just don't want to accidentally fire at any given time because it could, it could be pretty destructive. So um, to start, okay, so I'll just sort of go through the first five buttons that I have here are pretty simple and really they are uh, they were derived from the capture function but I kind of went through and edited some things out um, excuse me uh, what I really wanted to do is basically uh, just have very very quick and easy access to graphic EQs on some of the main PA drive so this file that I'm that I've got in front of me now is set up for uh, front of house excuse me again uh, front of house only so the first one is actually off of just graphic EQ number one, which is gang to number two. And that is, um, that's, uh, so those are paired uh, on the left right portion of the main out. Uh, number two, I have that's on the sub feed and then fill. So basically left, right, sub, fill, uh, just very, very quick graphic EQ pulls. Uh, four and five are pretty much the same thing except those are on matrix zone. So let's say I've got uh, delay fills or uh, some kind of a, another room that I'm feeding. So four and five are really doing the same thing, um, except they're just on those. Now, uh, on the, on the left-right sub-fill section, I do route that and run them through my uh, lake processor for the sake of, uh, of actual PA tuning and initial configuration and alignment. However... Um, when I, um, sometimes it's, it's just, it's a thing where I keep those graphic EQs inserted and 99.9% .9 out of the time, I probably don't really have to touch them, but, uh, in the event that I've got something that I just need to have a quick, easy, almost emergency type grab, it's nice to be able to just have something where I can pull those up no matter what layer I'm on. Uh, or what bank or anything like that. I, I, I know I can basically just reach up here and hit one of these buttons and know I can very, very quickly have a, a um, fast tonal shaping capability right in front of me. Uh, I'm gonna skip over number six for the time being and go over just a couple more of the basic ones. I am using seven, eight. This is pretty consistent in more or less any show file that I have. So we have our multiple banks of uh, faders here, so fader banks uh, in groups of 12, just like on any any other Digico console. Now the nine has two of them, uh, but in addition to banks, we also have layers. So uh, I actually set up seven as the layer switch for the left side of the console, and eight as the layer switch for the right side. Now I don't have too much here. Um, on the left side, layer two, I actually do have some of these. Uh, some key inputs set up that are actually, so the first six in my case are, uh, you know, things that I don't really need to get to during any given show or anything like that, but I, you know, uh, they're, they're just going to be here. So the first six are actually set up. Those are my trigger inputs for, uh, for all the drums. Um, 
in this case, I've uh, you may have seen some of my other videos where I've, I've I'm actually using instead of using an actual mechanical trigger for the time being, not running that additional line, I actually have those inputs double patched, and, I'm, and I have some treatment going on to actually make a pretty uh, just a nice handy little key filter on the gate, um, and you know that's explained in one of my other videos, but. So there's those first six. Uh, the, the next four are actually double patches of some of the background vocals, and I'm doing a very similar thing there. But in this case, I'm actually using, uh, you know, similar to how the drum keys are set up, but this one is actually, uh, these are the back, back, backing vocals for this group, so there's four of them available. And they are keying uh, PSE, primary source, uh, uh, primary source enhancers or primary source expander uh, waves inserts on the backing vocal channels themselves. So similar, uh, you know, basically this is what we're looking at here. So all these faders that are up and at Unity, th those are key inputs there on this layer. And then uh, this is actually my, uh, this is uh, just a regular input for the uh, acoustic guitar that's actually where, where it comes in but i i control the level of it with a uh, on another uh, on a fader on the top layer so it actually goes out of there and comes back into this is actually a stereo input and i've got some treatment on that so uh just uh it, it's a little different than how i would say normally do it but uh it's just one of those things that a lot of the effects that i do have on the acoustic guitar they stay on all right, so I'm uh, starting to drift away from macro speak a little bit, so I apologize. I'll try to get back right on track. So again, just quick recap, one through five, uh, quick recalls for graphic EQs. Um, and then, uh, so those can easily be, um, uh, easily be um, brought front and center to attention there. Seven, eight are my layer switches. Uh, I'm going to switch back over here. So number six, this is probably one of the more unique ones that I've got going on. Uh, anyone else who's ever watched any of my other stuff knows uh, that I do. Uh, I am taking the time to do some manual alignment and stuff. Uh, as far as my, uh, that's going, and that's going to utilize noise that goes through the channel, pink noise that goes through the channel, and noise that's actually a uh, from a, um, a reference channel source. Um, I don't change that input. Um, so it's the same input actually on this bank here. Uh, so you can probably hear that a little bit. That's basically, I have this set up in the mode where I would just be doing, uh, so you can see as I push that up, it's gonna go through the master bus and then inherently out through uh, the, uh, the matrix drives. So um, where I'm using this macro is, if I bring this up, number six, What I have going on now, I hit that macro, and now the routing has changed in within the console for the purpose of measuring the the electronic impulses in the desk itself. So basically, it's a macro that I can use to switch between measuring a live, real, in-person PA system, or a um, um, or the electronic impulses for the sake of alignment. Uh, so. That's kind of a handy one to have. Uh, it's one of those that I do keep it up here on the top layer. If I were to accidentally hit it for whatever reason during the show, none of these that I have up here, if I accidentally you know, run a hand across it or anything like that, none of them that I have in play here are show critical to the point where they're gonna recall or mute or do anything of the sort that is going to be, um, that is gonna be destructive towards uh, the actual in-process live mix. So um, it's just one of those things I can kind of kick it. And typically, I will leave it right there to, to start for, because uh, if I'm gonna take the console out on the show, usually I'm gonna be working on a PA and then I can pretty easily switch over. Um, <clears throat> it does do some routing switches um, in terms of, um, basically where it's uh, routed, where that source is routed then in the matrix. So when I do hit that, uh, you can kind of see. So right now, um, uh, the the matrix input routing is actually, for that particular source, is actually set up as a direct from the, uh, from the measurement mic. So that's how it would be set up in a regular PA test environment. 
I hit the macro, now it's set up to be fed, that matrix is now set up to be fed directly from this smart channel, which is how we get our, that's our, um, that's our measurement uh, piece or point for the, uh, for the actual, um, for the measurement of the impulse response of the console. So going along with that, I'm just gonna switch back over, pull this down. Uh, the other element that I have here that is, a, that is a macro that is definitely more tucked away, and this is one that if I were to accidentally fire it uh, at any given show situation, this would be pretty dramatic, especially if I do have the pink noise generator from Smart still running. Um, you know, on my keyboard, I'm actually going to have to set this down for just a moment, so bear with me. Sorry for the stream close up on the console there for a second. So on my keyboard, I'm using uh, F8. And what that does, I push F8. I now have uh, my alternate input selected, which my alternate input is the, um, and you'll notice up here at the top, we are now on alternate input. The alternate input for every single one of my input sources is uh, one side of that pink noise generator from Smart, uh, which is where I actually get the uh, get uh, am able to compare um, the relative alignment between the input and the output of uh, of of all the all the channels, and then fully on through to the matrix drive. So that's a handy feature to have, um, but obviously that's one of those where you would never, uh, you, that's one of those you don't accidentally want to brush up against during a show because it's basically going to take every single input, especially if your pink noise is running, um, and routes it to all channels and takes the mic pre's away. So uh, just uh, for this, I have... 32 um you know this show is about is about 32 inputs large for the time being and um if i were to hit that then i'd have 32 sources that are also being affected by um um mic pre's and or, or i'm sorry uh, affected by channel processing that it's all uh, it's basically i'm going to get 32 stems of pink noise uh could be pretty uh, at at the same nominal level uh could be pretty, um, be an, uh, an interesting surprise to say none the least. Um, so, but it's very handy to be able to have that to switch back and forth and then come in here, hit it again, and then we're back on our regular uh, mic pre source or copied audio, depending on what mode I'm working in. So, there we go. Uh, there's, uh, what is that? I guess I've got uh, nine macros set up, including the, uh, the one function key. Uh, one that I've been considering setting up is, uh, sort of goes along with that alignment piece. And I've even thought about maybe even building it into the, uh, to the alternate input or pink noise input for, for all the channels is, um, the ability to go in and actually do the necessary bypasses that I need, um, for all those. So, uh, you know, when I do those measurements, I'm going to take high pass, low pass filters out, um, However, I need to be able, and then there are elements that I can control within the Waves ecosystem, such as turning things off, but I don't want to disable them, or I, I can't take the insert out, because uh, the, the instance still has to be instantiated to get an accurate reading on this. It just has to be popped out. So, for instance, let's just say I'm measuring the keys channel, which is what happens to be up in focus right now. The way I would do that is bring that up here and then just turn these guys off. However, the instances are still here, meaning they are still taking up their same latent path. So, you know, I would just take them out for the purpose of getting a flat phase trace or a flat, uh, and flat frequency response. The reason I'm not really doing that is because while I could do a lot of things console related here at the desk, um, in addition to the, the bypasses, there are external things that I still have to remember and think about to do when I'm doing some of those bypasses. Um, so in the same way that I can turn these units off while still keeping their instances um, engaged or instantiated in the, uh, in the Waves environment, over here in Universal Audio Land, um, you know, I kind of have to do a similar process, but that's pretty much a matter of going in and just using the on-off switches on each one of these. Doing the same thing, 
but you know I can't just turn the power off on these racks or else you're not going to actually get a proper uh, time reading on those. So that's in Universal Audio Land, and then, and, um, then there's, uh, there's definitely no MIDI command that could get over here to all the way over to the real analog rig, which, you know, uh, the cream liners across the two bus, I would just bypass that, turn off the, 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 the individual uh, processing. So there's EQ, tape saturation, uh, compressor, and then a PSE. Uh, that's the lead vocal chain, uh, and then bypass the reverb. So all that has to be done manually anyway. Turn these guys back on since I've actually still been working on it. Unpot and, you know, re-engage that. So there we go. Uh, you know, I mean, because of the fact that I have to sort of already have my mind in this environment and knowing about this environment as well, it just, it sort of keeps my brain in one place to say, okay, if I know that I'm doing the measurements that I'm going to be going in and bypassing in a certain way while keeping these instances live. So all that to say, I mean, I could go in, it would be a pretty extensive macro to write, but I could actually get in there to say, okay, one button is going to bypass all of the stuff that's in, that's involved in both the regular console processing and I could get it to actually communicate and work with the wave stuff too, but none of that is ever going to get over into this realm, nor is it going to get over, uh, it's definitely not going to get here into the realm of analog and um, uh, and into the actual analog I.O. So there we go. Um, macro stuff. Um, that's on one file. Uh, I do have another file that's... Um, actually set up where I run front of house and monitor from the same console. Pretty much the only difference I have there is my first couple of macros because they're just things I need to be able to get to. Those are quick sends on fader macros for those other auxes that are um, set up on different, you know, I don't use the same set of inputs for front of house and monitor processing for the sake of, uh, you know, goes back again, timing. Uh, I use uh, time, um, to my advantage for front of house stuff. And then for the sake of running monitors, there are double patch two inputs that for the, that all have zero time and just using console processing for that. So uh, for those, instead of, instead of pulling up those quick grabs for graphic EQs, I use those as, um, I use those as features to be able to, to quickly dive into a monitor mix, but the same, uh, the, the other same, macros applies. Number six is still my, um, my switch back and forth between, uh, measurement types and then seven, eight have pretty consistently been my layer switches. So, uh, on an SD nine, I mean, that's pretty much my methods for, uh, for macros. It's more or less like what I've got available and what I've found to be the most, uh, uh, mo uh the things that I need to be able to access the most. So, um, uh, hope everybody's doing well and, uh, you've enjoyed this one. All right. Cheers, everybody.